right. Well, good morning. Welcome, everybody. It's, it's great to have such a full house here this morning. And I am not surprised because this is a significant and exciting announcement. And it really does represent a win-win-win for so, so many. And you don't always get to make those kinds of announcements. But today truly is that kind of announcement. So thank you all for joining um, us today. Uh, also, you know, just want to note this is this is Team Massachusetts. We talk a lot about Team Massachusetts, the LG and I, and this is what Team Massachusetts looks like. Uh, folks in the administration, folks outside of the administration, our partners in government, our partners in private industry, and in the NGO community, and it's super super exciting. So, welcome everyone uh, today to my uh, terrific teammate and uh, your Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll, our legislative leadership who are here today. So many folks are here from the legislature. You'll hear from uh, Senator Cream in a moment. But so many in our state legislature have been champions of climate action and environmental justice. And we thank you for that work. And we thank you for the charge that you have given us. Um, to our climate chief, Melissa Hoffer, who is our country's first climate chief. Uh, <laughs> Melissa has been busy at work on a number of fronts, making sure that we are driving a climate agenda across the entire administration. And we are grateful to her for her leadership um, and also her teamwork, because she would be the first to say it takes an entire team, which is also why we have our Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs, Rebecca Tepper, who's breaking ground in clean energy and resilience policy. Our ANF Secretary, Matt Gorkowitz, who's providing financial expertise as we navigate. Our Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities, Ed Augustus, another first on our team who's keeping our focus on housing access. Our Undersecretary for Economic Development, Ashley Stolba, a leadership, a leader in our uh, community development efforts. Our Mass Housing Executive Director, Crystal Cornegay, a longtime leader in creating affordable homes. Mass Clean Energy Center CEO, come, come up here, uh, Jennifer Delosio and Mass Development Head Dan Rivera, who bring deep expertise in their work. And finally joining us is Mayor Michelle Wu. We are so lucky to have the nation's climate mayor leading our capital city, uh, and we are grateful to her for our continued partnership on so many fronts. So thank you one and all. Now, importantly, looking out, here's what I see. I see our passionate environmental advocates, our dedicated housing advocates, our friends and allies in the labor movement, our partners in the banking and finance sector. Together, everyone uh, committed to making Massachusetts the world's climate leader by bringing all the benefits of a green and resilient economy to all the people of our state. Today, we're taking a big step forward in that direction. We are thrilled to launch the Massachusetts Community Climate Bank. <laughs> the Climate Bank is a financial engine for cutting emissions and improving health, equity, and financial security in our communities. It's going to unlock and advance a wide range of green building and renovation projects. And it's going to do that by investing in affordable homes all across the state. A green bank is something that I made a priority in our campaign. We spoke about this because we viewed it as an opportunity that we believe can be transformational. The Biden administration is making historic levels of funding available for clean energy, carbon reduction, and climate action. We're talking about billions of dollars in grant funding, tax credits, and more through the Inflation Reduction Act. This is an opportunity to get on track to meet our net zero 2050 target, to lead the nation's clean energy transition with Massachusetts innovation, and to strengthen our economy and our communities. And this is the opportunity that we are seizing today. We have an incredible congressional delegation working 
With us and for all of us, Senator Markey was co-author of the National Climate Bank legislation. It formed the basis of the $27 billion Greenhouse Gas Reduction Fund in the IRA that will come into play later this year. This is funding that we are expressly and intensively working to leverage through this Massachusetts Community Climate Bank. We've created new positions and put administration officials in place to lead our advocacy. We've doubled down on local engagement programs for cities and towns, like the MVP 2.0 program. We're competing for these federal funds, and we're putting Massachusetts communities and families in position to benefit directly from these investments. That's why we're doing something truly special and unprecedented in our approach to the Community Climate Bank. Now, other states have started climate banks. Ours, though, is the country's first climate bank that is dedicated to housing, affordable housing in particular. That is the primary focus. We're centering environmental justice for folks hit hardest by the climate impacts and high energy costs. One study estimates that here in Massachusetts, our buildings account for nearly 27% of greenhouse gas emissions. But in many of our gateway cities and environmental justice communities, those numbers rise to almost 70% of greenhouse gas emissions. So we know this work is important, and that's why it is targeted, and that's why it is unique. Today, through this vehicle, we're going to be putting forward opportunities, tools to decarbonize buildings, which are, as I said, a major source of emissions. Uh, this climate bank is going to grow over time to address the urgent needs across this sector. We're going to be able to innovate and finance deep energy retrofits, on-site electric vehicle charging, and solar projects that will demonstrate the viability of these technologies at a community-wide scale, in addition to doing things that you all understand, insulation, better windows, better roofs, all of these things contribute to energy efficiency will help greatly reduce emissions. This is about creating green, livable communities, which is also why we intentionally put community right in the name. The Community Climate Bank is going to be based in Mast Housing, the agency which finances uh, affordable development and first-time home ownership in our state. It's going to be run in partnership with our Massachusetts Clean Energy Center and Mass Development, the state's development finance agency. And this means we're going to be able to really hit the ground running, which is exactly what we want to do. We're seeding it with $50 million, and that's going to allow us to leverage then both private investment and the unprecedented federal funding streams that I just mentioned. This funding is going to support building and retrofitting affordable homes across our state. Uh, for example, first-time home buyers could get access to technologies that slash both their emissions and their energy bills. I just made mention of some of the concrete ways that can happen. Nonprofit developers, importantly, are going to get access to capital that makes possible a net zero development serving hundreds of families. And the state will have an opportunity to rehab and retrofit older existing properties. This includes affordable sites, it includes our public housing stock uh, that's in need of repair, all by getting access to new federal climate funds. And in each case, residents are going to end up with high quality affordable homes and lower energy costs. Massachusetts communities become greener, more affordable, and more livable places for families and businesses to grow. And the other thing I want to mention is jobs. There's one state recently that did this. It's estimated that it generated 5,000 new jobs. So we're really excited about what this means for economic growth as well. When I talk about climate change as our biggest threat, I also say that it's our greatest opportunity. And I really, really mean that. And that's what today represents. The Community Climate Bank is an opportunity to help meet our emissions targets and to protect our environment. It's also an opportunity to relieve the extreme pressure that residents and families are he feeling here in the state when it comes to housing. It's an opportunity to create good jobs with access through education, through training pipelines, 
Uh, we're going to work with our friends in labor, um, and we're going to work to support our new uh, initiative, Mass Talent, which is about creating new pipelines, working with labor, community colleges, and employers. The Climate Bank, you see, is going to create tremendous opportunities for this state. Green banks generate demand for more clean energy and help mobilize capital for projects to meet that demand, creating even more jobs as they grow. Finally, and most importantly, it's an opportunity for healthier communities all across Massachusetts, where people can breathe cleaner air and young people especially will be able to grow up in a world where they can reach their full potential. The Climate Bank will make our state more attractive, more competitive, more affordable, and more equitable. It's going to show that once again here in Massachusetts we can lead. We can lead not only this country, we can lead the world by leading with our values and leaving no one behind. Leading with our strength, our ingenuity, our work ethic to get things done. So I just want to thank everyone who's worked really hard to make this happen because it's just been six months and this is something we had as an idea. It took an incredible amount of uh, innovation and thought to uh, make sure that we got it to the place where we were ready to, to um, go prime time with it. That day has come thanks to the great efforts of so many here alongside me and so many of you out here in this room. And I want to thank everybody for working so hard to make this a reality. It's a big deal. That's why that check is written out. It truly is for the people of Massachusetts. I now want to invite to the podium Senator Cindy Cream, who's chair of the Committee on Global Warming and Climate Change, a longtime champion for really strong, bold environmental policy here in Massachusetts. We welcome Chair Cream. Thank you, Governor, and thank you uh, to the Governor, the Lieutenant Governor, Chief Hoffer, Secretary Tepa, for your commitment to achieve Massachusetts emission reduction mandates, and also for your commitment to climate resilience and adaption. I'm proud to be part of this team. It's even bigger than the cream team. <laughs> I'm excited that Massachusetts Community Climate Bank will benefit from the expertise, will benefit from the expertise three wonderful state agencies, Mass CEC, Mass Development, and Mass Housing. I'm excited that it will put us in a position to compete for billions of dollars in federal funding. When I say us, all of us, all residents. And I'm so thrilled about that. I'm excited that the Climate Bank is focused on two areas, resilience and housing decarbonization, that have also been important priorities for the Massachusetts Senate. Last session, through the leadership of Senate President Spilker and Senator Barrett, who I see here today, the legislature created a groundbreaking program that will enable 10 communities to restrict the use of fossil fuels in new construction. It was also through the leadership of the House and Chairman Roy, so I give everybody credit here. Uh, as proud as we are of that accomplishment, we recognize that addressing emissions from existing buildings is the unfinished work before us this session. In January, I filed legislation that would create a revolving loan fund administered by Mass Housing to help finance projects, projects to retrofit and electrify residential buildings. And I'm delighted to see that the governor's team is on the same page. Great minds that think alike. The Healy administration's climate bank is going to make it much easier for us to take on the challenge of decarbonizing millions of homes across the Commonwealth. The Senate, the Senate and the Climate Committee I chair have also been focusing our attention on climate resilience and adaptation. Resilience is something, the forgotten stepchild of climate policy, and I'm so glad to see that it's a core part of the Massachusetts Climate Bank. The financing made available for resilience investments will make us a healthier and safer Commonwealth in the face of rising seas, extreme heat, and more frequent and more intense storms. I'm grateful to the Healy administration for acting so quickly 
to make the Climate Bank a reality. And I look forward to partnering with you, to partnering with you on its long-term implementation. Uh, now I'd like to turn it over to an another climate champion, the climate mayor, the mayor of Green New Deal and the mayor of Boston, Mayor Wu. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, everyone from all of our administration officials and leaders from the legislature, from labor, our community partners, uh, city officials who are here, and, and representatives from every level of government. Uh, thank you for hosting us in this beautiful space, which is uh, now not only uh, we're surrounded by the folios and leaves of legislative documents dating back hundreds of years, but actual lush wooded green here. So shout out to DCR for creating the right tone. I know we'll get these in the ground while it's still a cool day. Um, and, and we're so thrilled to, to be here with people who have been dreaming and building um, not only Massachusetts leadership in first public libraries and, and the commitments to passing on our shared intellectual history and culture, public education, but now really setting a stake in the ground with the leadership of the Healy Driscoll administration, that we are going to be the city and commonwealth known for investing in the public good for a long time to come. I want to thank also uh, the Green Ribbon Commission and Bank of America, as they were original partners with the city of Boston more than two years ago uh, under the leadership of, of some of the folks here and continued with our Chief of Energy, Environment, and Open Space, Reverend Mariama Whitehammond and her team. Uh, we're also joined today by our Green New Deal Director, Oliver, um, Oliver Salas Garcia, who is <laughs> in the back of the room over there as well. Um, this is so impactful and uh, we've been proud to do research on what it would mean for a climate bank to come to fruition and be able to address the, the very needs that we're seeing um, brought into reality today. I also want to give a, a thank you to our Environment Department Commissioner, Allison Brizius, uh, to Brad Swing, our Director of Energy Policy and Programs, as well as our Chief Financial Officer, Ashley Grafenberger, and Director of Alternative Finance, Jerrica Bradley, for their critical work in helping us think through how we can best be a partner to support the state in this effort. A Green New Deal for Boston means taking action that is bigger, bolder, and more creative to innovate solutions that don't just focus on climate change in isolation, but create opportunities for us to address multiple challenges where they intersect all at the same time. We've been working in partnership with every level of government and are so thankful to the Healy Driscoll administration and all the partners here, the private sector, labor, and community to lay a solid foundation for decarbonizing housing, especially affordable housing and public housing in Boston. We have a local program funded through our federal recovery dollars, providing up to $50,000 per unit for deep energy retrofits for income-restricted buildings with 15 or more units inside. It focuses specifically on large, affordable, multifamily housing in line with our commitment to make Boston not only the greenest city in the country, but the best place to raise a family. We've already seen the impact that that makes on individuals and residents, family members who will be able to live in healthy, clean, and more cost-efficient uh, homes while also creating jobs that are directly helping to put food on the table for our residents at the same time and building an economy that will be uh, the, leading the way when it comes to jobs of the future. To build a model that really works, we are so grateful for this opportunity to unlock more financing to scale our examples across Boston and the entire state. We have a pipeline full of projects already that will benefit from the new Massachusetts Community Climate Bank and its mission. Fossil fuel free housing is one of those critical intersections where climate, quality of life, health equity, and economic justice meet. And we're so grateful that leaders in the State House, in this administration, understand the importance of seizing the opportunity in front of us to accelerate decarbonization across our homes, workplaces, and shared spaces. Boston is one of those communities where more than 70% of our emissions come from buildings. And of those buildings, many of them are the beautiful, historic, but much older homes that 
very much need support in energy retrofits that will secure what it means to live in our communities for a long time to come. The creation of this state community climate bank will also help seed and attract more investment from every sector as well. It will unlock the next level of funding available through the Inflation Reduction Act, as mentioned. It will also help us reach and connect with those matching programs that are now being developed by community partners and organizations looking to accelerate our transition overall. We know that every dollar provided by this bank is going to be stretched and stretched and have multiples in impact when it comes to uh, funding community projects that make our city more affordable and greener. This bank, therefore, will pay a, play a crucial role in decreasing the overall cost of living in Boston, decarbonizing affordable housing, sharing the social and economic benefits of the green economy with more of our communities, and advancing environmental justice for our EJ communities, those who are in greatest need of services. We're grateful to this administration for recognizing the urgency of bringing together resources across industries and sectors to address the climate crisis. And we look forward to continuing to partner with the state and the Community Climate Bank to make meaningful investments in our communities, our planet, and our future. Now I'd like to turn it over to a leader in climate finance whose advocacy has united the financial community and galvanized critical private sector support for climate action, CEO and President of Ceres, Mindy Luber. Congratulations uh, to all of my colleagues. It is rare, it is truly rare to find ourselves with the opportunity for transformation at the size and the level of this particular bank coupled with what's going on in Washington. Transformation on unprecedented levels and sizes in three of the most interconnected and compelling areas of our life, whether it's climate change, housing, justice and equity, and a sustainable economy, this bank will have a role in all of those things. Uh, I am Mindy Luber. I do work with 150 global companies and 700 investors to integrate sustainability, climate change, into everything they do, from the boardroom to the supply chain, from their employees to their investments, how they manage it, how they set climate goals, and what they're doing to meet those goals. And the reality is, not everybody is acting at a pace we want, but there is extraordinary progress in the private sector, progress that is looking to couple with the kind of work the Commonwealth is announcing today and doing. Think about it as well. The IRA, $369 billion. The infrastructure bill, $3 trillion, or close to $3 trillion. That is transformative. And it will only work if it's coupled with sound, smart, reasonable state programs and local programs that could do the job and get it done. I'm not sure we have seen anything more transformational or the potential for or that we will. Um, I want to say something else. I also work on the executive committee or as a member of the Green Ribbon Commission. And it's another example of where working with the city of Boston is about bringing together the private sector and the public sector to see the kind of results we need. The Community Climate Bank today that we're announcing, and really, it is extraordinary. It is a model nationally. We will see other states pick it up. But it's also focused on a major source of emissions that often gets neglected, and in a sector that often gets neglected, and on people who often get neglected. Focusing on housing where there is an enormous problem with emissions, an enormous opportunity to deal with those emissions, and at the same time deal with equity and justice. So much of what it takes to retrofit homes in the short term require upfront resources. Here's an opportunity to save energy over the long term, save money, but really deal with the problem that so many people have had in jump-starting their own journey on climate change. This program has all the hallmarks of what we need from state climate policy in 2023. Right now, with the tens of billions of dollars and hundreds of billions of dollars nationally, we can make a difference with focus. The Climate Bank does exactly that. 
And it's no secret the Commonwealth needs to do a number of things and has been moving, and it is a leader. But cleaning up buildings of all shapes and sizes, from skyscrapers to factories, to single-family homes to apartment buildings, is an area that deserves our attention and extraordinary that we now have a focus like a laser on making that happen. The challenges are clear, but the opportunity is even more clear. So there cannot be, in my mind, a much better use of these state funds than to unlock all the federal and private money to help equitably clean up buildings across Massachusetts. It is precisely the kind of smart thinking that has made Massachusetts a climate leader to this point, and congratulations for this new model. Thank you, and back to you, Governor. Well, thank you so much to all of our speakers for your comments and, and for your partnership, um, both in days leading up to today and, and then being here today. Um, I also want to acknowledge somebody really important on our team, and that is our Chief Legal Counsel, Paige Scott Reed, because without her involvement, um, none of this would have worked. We were doing something that hadn't been done before, and we were creating something that had not been created before. And it required a lot of thinking through about how to, how to get all our different entities and elements within an administration working together. So Paige, we're really grateful to you for your work. Um, we are um, happy to take any questions on, on topic right now. Great. Well, thanks for the question, Charmin. And in reference to the trees, I did appreciate the mayor's comment. Um, thanks to the good work of, of DCR, we were provided some trees here for today's uh, press conference. And as the mayor said, they will soon be planted, which is, uh, which is beautiful. But we appreciate not only this room, but also um, the presence of, of the trees. So, you know, the way I think about it, um, it was described to me as, um, well, I'll say this. First of all, it's a great vehicle. You have to set up a vehicle, both to seed it with some, some state funding, but also, most importantly, as a way to attract additional funding. I talked about the funding that we're going to get, hopefully, from the federal government. We're going hard after all that funding. There's almost a trillion dollars, remember, out there in the different pieces of legislation that have been passed, bipartisan, by the way, signed by President Biden. So it's seed money from the state that's going to uh, be coupled with federal funding that we're going to apply for, and importantly, attracting attracting investment, attracting capital from private sources. And that's why there was reference to some of the financial institutions who are in the room today, some in the investment community. This is a hot area. People see the need uh, for this as a really wise strategic investment. So this is the way it's going to work. To really boil it down, it was described to me um, by the person who maybe was the architect of some of this. So. Uh, as Hamburger Helper. Remember Hamburger Helper? <laughs> You're making a meal, right? So, so it really enhances uh, everything and it leverages, you know, what we're able to do. If you look at certain states, you know, we see in one state, for example, that set up a, a, a climate bank, um, not as innovative or as targeted as what we're looking to do here, but it was a climate bank nonetheless. They were able to attract for every dollar, public dollar that it went in, they were able to attract seven dollars in private investment. That's huge. So that's what we're talking about in terms of the way this works. It, it, it's growing money. It's growing money, as I'm looking at the trees, it's growing money that is going to be plowed directly into development. In some places, you may live in a community where there's some old mill buildings. You may live in public housing, you know, that's, that's falling apart. Um, you may live in buildings that simply need to be rehabbed, right? There's a lot of old buildings in Massachusetts. So those places, we're going to get workers in there, and they're going to up and do that work. And you're going to end up with a more energy efficient building that also is reducing emissions in that community. In other places, we're going to see new construction. Delighted to see the number of developers that we have in the room here today who understand 
you know, the value proposition and know that through a vehicle like this, the math can actually work, where you can go out and build new housing, and in particular affordable housing, which we know is really needed here across the state. So, you know, that's probably too long an answer, Sherman, but, <laughs> but um, you know, that, that's basically what this, what this does. And it's, it's, it's a fund, you know, that's going to be there, um, administered, um, as uh, uh, as well by by Mass Housing, which has the expertise in doing the math and getting financing out the door to places, um, and we hope to have um, a, a lot of interest and a lot of appetite for for these kinds of investments. How long do you anticipate before this gets to the end use? Say I'm a, a homeless fall apartment building. Who do I call to get the money, and how long before we can get the money to, to sink into that property to make it more efficient and make it more affordable? I had a feeling I'd be asked that question. I'd ask that question. Okay, and here's what I was told I could say. <laughs> know that <laughs> um, some of that funding, you know, the federal funding is still in the process of being let out the door and program requirements and eligibility being set. We're all going to be in the process of applying for that. But that should not stop the work that's happening right now. And there are real time and there will be real time conversations with developers and communities about what we can do, what projects we can look to start and, and really get going with. So, um, you know, I really hope that over the next coming months, you know, we're working towards a plan for particular projects in communities. Uh, really, really excited about uh, the involvement of so many of our grassroots organizations and community organizations who have been really driving change and, and leading on this. But the answer is very, very soon. I think all of the above is the idea. I mean, um, and that's sort of what is exciting about this. We're prepared to um, focus in the first instance on affordable housing. Um, that doesn't close the door down the line to other forms of investment in other things that will help us address our, our, our climate imperative. Um, but our intention is to be nimble, to make this a, a, a maximum utility by the, the greatest number, um, but to do so in a way that, that, that's smart and thoughtful and targeted because, you know, we, we don't want anything half-baked. We want to make sure that, you know, we're, things are lined up, everything's lined up, and we're good to go. Um, that's what the people of the state deserve. Do, well, just, I, I promise. Anybody else on this topic? Is there anything I missed? No? Okay. No? Okay, exciting day. Again, many, many thanks to uh, all the partners represented in this room.